Behavioral Economics Behavioral Economics studies the effects of psychological, cognitive, emotional, cultural and social factors on the decisions of individuals and institutions and how those decisions vary from those implied by classical economic theory. Behavioral economics is primarily concerned with the bounds of rationality of economic agents. Behavioral models typically integrate insights from psychology, neuroscience and microeconomic theory. The study of behavioral economics includes how market decisions are made and the mechanisms that drive public choice. The three prevalent themes in behavioral economics are. In 2002, psychologist Daniel Kahneman was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for having integrated insights from psychological research into economic science, especially concerning human judgment and decision-making under uncertainty. In 2013, economist Robert J. Schiller received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his empirical analysis of asset prices, within the field of behavioral finance. In 2017, economist Richard Thaler was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his contributions to behavioral economics and his pioneering work in establishing that people are predictably irrational in ways that defy economic theory. History During the classical period of economics, Microeconomics was closely linked to psychology. For example, Adam Smith wrote The Theory of Moral Sentiments, which proposed psychological explanations of individual behavior, including concerns about fairness and justice. Jeremy Bentham wrote extensively on the psychological underpinnings of utility. Then, during the development of neoclassical economics, economists sought to reshape the discipline as a natural science, deducing behavior from assumptions about the nature of economic agents. They developed the concept of homo economicus, whose behavior was fundamentally rational. Neoclassical economists did incorporate psychological explanations, this was true of Francis Edgeworth, Vilfredo Pareto, and Irving Fisher. Economic psychology emerged in the 20th century in the works of Gabriel Tard, George Katona, and Laszlo Garay. Expected utility and discounted utility models began to gain acceptance, generating testable hypotheses about decision-making given uncertainty and intertemporal consumption, respectively. Observed and repeatable anomalies eventually challenged those hypotheses, and further steps were taken by Maurice Allais, for example, in setting out the Allais paradox, a decision problem he first presented in 1953 that contradicts the expected utility hypothesis. In the 1960s cognitive psychology began to shed more light on the brain as an information processing device, in contrast to behaviorist models. Psychologists in this field, such as Ward Edwards, Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman began to compare their cognitive models of decision-making under risk and uncertainty to economic models of rational behavior. Mathematical psychology reflects a long-standing interest in preference transitivity and the measurement of utility. Bounded rationality Bounded rationality is the idea that when individuals make decisions, their rationality is limited by the tractability of the decision problem, their cognitive limitations and the time available. Decision makers in this view act as satisficers, seeking a satisfactory solution rather than an optimal one. Herbert A. Simon proposed bounded rationality as an alternative basis for the mathematical modeling of decision making. It complements rationality as optimization, which views decision-making as a fully rational process of finding an optimal choice given the information available. Simon used the analogy of a pair of scissors, where one blade represents human cognitive limitations and the other the structures of the environment, illustrating how minds compensate for limited resources by exploiting known structural regularity in the environment. Bounded rationality implicates the idea that humans take shortcuts that may lead to suboptimal decision-making. Behavioral economists engage in mapping the decision shortcuts that agents use in order to help increase the effectiveness of human decision-making. One treatment of this idea comes from Cass Sunstein and Richard Thaler's nudge. Sunstein and Thaler recommend that choice architectures are modified in light of human agents' bounded rationality. A widely cited proposal from Sunstein and Thaler urges that healthier food be placed at site level in order to increase the likelihood that a person will opt for that choice instead of less healthy option. Some critics of Nudge have lodged attacks that modifying choice architectures will lead to people becoming worse decision makers. Prospect Theory In 1979, Kahneman and Tversky published Prospect Theory, 
an analysis of decision under risk, that used cognitive psychology to explain various divergences of economic decision-making from neoclassical theory. Prospect theory has two stages, an editing stage and an evaluation stage. In the editing stage, risky situations are simplified using various heuristics. In the evaluation phase, risky alternatives are evaluated using various psychological principles that include Prospect theory is able to explain everything that the two main existing decision theories, expected utility theory and rank-dependent utility theory, can explain. Further, prospect theory has been used to explain phenomena that existing decision theories have great difficulty in explaining. These include backward-bending labor supply curves, asymmetric price elasticities, tax evasion and co-movement of stock prices and consumption. In 1992, in the Journal of Risk and Uncertainty, Kahneman and Tversky gave a revised account of prospect theory that they called cumulative prospect theory. The new theory eliminated the editing phase in prospect theory and focused just on the evaluation phase. Its main feature was that it allowed for non-linear probability weighting in a cumulative manner, which was originally suggested in John Quiggin's rank-dependent utility theory. Psychological traits such as overconfidence, projection bias, and the effects of limited attention are now part of the theory. Other developments include a conference at the University of Chicago, a special behavioral economics edition of the Quarterly Journal of Economics, in memory of Amos Tversky, and Kahneman's 2002 Nobel Prize for having integrated insights from psychological research into economic science, especially concerning human judgment and decision-making under uncertainty. Intertemporal choice Behavioral economics has been applied to intertemporal choice, which is defined as making a decision and having the effects of such decision happening in a different time. Intertemporal choice behavior is largely inconsistent, as exemplified by George Ainsley's hyperbolic discounting, one of the prominently studied observations, and further developed by David Labson, Ted O'Donohue and Matthew Rabin. Hyperbolic discounting describes the tendency to discount outcomes in the near future more than outcomes in the far future. This pattern of discounting is dynamically inconsistent, or time inconsistent, and therefore inconsistent with basic models of rational choice, since the rate of discount between time t and t plus 1 will be low at time t1 when t is the near future, but high at time t when t is the present and time t plus 1 is the near future. This pattern can also be explained through models of subadditive discounting that distinguish the delay and interval of discounting, people are less patient, per time unit over shorter intervals regardless of when they occur. Dot. Other areas of research Other branches of behavioral economics enrich the model of the utility function without implying inconsistency in preferences. Ernst Fear, Armin Falk, and Rabin studied fairness, inequity aversion and reciprocal altruism, weakening the neoclassical assumption of perfect selfishness. This work is particularly applicable to wage setting. The work on intrinsic motivation by Ganesi and Rustichini and identity by Egoloff and Cranton assumes that agents derive utility from adopting personal and social norms in addition to conditional expected utility. According to Agarwal, in addition to behavioral deviations from rational equilibrium, markets are also likely to suffer from lagged responses, search costs, externalities of the commons, and other frictions making it difficult to disentangle behavioral effects in market behavior. Conditional expected utility is a form of reasoning where the individual has an illusion of control, and calculates the probabilities of external events and hence their utility as a function of their own action, even when they have no causal ability to affect those external events. Dot. Behavioral economics caught on among the general public with the success of books such as Dan Ariely's Predictably Irrational. Practitioners of the discipline have studied quasi-public policy topics such as broadband mapping, Applications for behavioral economics include the modeling of the consumer decision-making process for applications in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The Silicon Valley-based startup Singularities is using the AGM postulates proposed by Al Curran, Gardenfors, and Makinson, the formalization of the concepts of beliefs and change for rational entities, in a symbolic logic to create a machine learning and deduction engine that uses the latest data science and big data algorithms in order to generate the content and conditional rules, counterfash rules, that capture customers' behaviors and beliefs. Applications of behavioral economics also exist in other disciplines, for example in the area of supply chain management. Natural experiments. 
From a biological point of view, human behaviors are essentially the same during crises accompanied by stock market crashes and during bubble growth when share prices exceed historic highs. During those periods, most market participants see something new for themselves, and this inevitably induces a stress response in them with accompanying changes in their endocrine profiles and motivations. The result is quantitative and qualitative changes in behavior. This is one example where behavior affecting economics and finance can be observed and variably contrasted using behavioral economics. Behavioral economics usefulness applies beyond environments similar to stock exchanges. Selfish reasoning, adult behaviors, and similar, can be identified within criminal concealments, and legal deficiencies and neglect of different types can be observed and discovered. Awareness of indirect consequence, or lack of, at least in potential with different experimental models and methods, can be used as well. Behavioral economics potential uses are broad, but its reliability needs scrutiny. Underestimation of the role of novelty as a stressor is the primary shortcoming of current approaches for market research. It is necessary to account for the biologically determined aphasisms of human behavior in everyday low-stress conditions and in response to stressors. Limitations of experimental methods, for example randomized control trials, and their use in economics were famously analyzed by Angus Deaton. Criticism Critics of behavioral economics typically stress the rationality of economic agents. A fundamental critique is provided by Mailer, 2019, who argues that no behavioral research can establish an economic theory. Examples provided on this account include pillars of behavioral economics such as satisficing behavior or prospect theory, which are confronted from the neoclassical perspective of utility maximization and expected utility theory respectively. The author shows that behavioral findings are hardly generalizable and that they do not disprove typical mainstream axioms related to rational behavior. Others note that cognitive theories, such as prospect theory, are models of decision-making, not generalized economic behavior, and are only applicable to the sort of once-off decision problems presented to experiment participants or survey respondents. Others argue that decision-making models, such as the endowment effect theory, that have been widely accepted by behavioral economists may be erroneously established as a consequence of poor experimental design practices that do not adequately control subject misconceptions. A notable concern is that despite a great deal of rhetoric, no unified behavioral theory has yet been espoused. Behavioral economists have proposed no unified theory. David Gall has argued that many of these issues stem from behavioral economics being too concerned with understanding how behavior deviates from standard economic models rather than with understanding why people behave the way they do. Understanding why behavior occurs is necessary for the creation of generalizable knowledge, the goal of science. He has referred to behavioral economics as a triumph of marketing and particularly cited the example of loss aversion. Traditional economists are skeptical of the experimental and survey-based techniques that behavioral economics uses extensively. Economists typically stress revealed preferences over stated preferences, from surveys, in the determination of economic value. Experiments and surveys are at risk of systemic biases, strategic behavior and lack of incentive compatibility. Some researchers point out that participants of experiments conducted by behavioral economists are not representative enough and drawing broad conclusions on the basis of such experiments is not possible. An acronym word has been coined in order to describe the study's participants, as those, who come from Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic societies. Responses Matthew Rabin dismisses these criticisms, countering that consistent results typically are obtained in multiple situations and geographies and can produce good theoretical insight. Behavioral economists, however, responded to these criticisms by focusing on field studies rather than lab experiments. Some economists see a fundamental schism between experimental economics and behavioral economics but prominent behavioral and experimental economists tend to share techniques and approaches in answering common questions. For example, behavioral economists are investigating neuroeconomics, which is entirely experimental and has not been verified in the field. The epistemological, ontological, and methodological components of behavioral economics are increasingly debated, in particular by historians of economics and economic methodologists. 
According to some researchers, when studying the mechanisms that form the basis of decision-making, especially financial decision-making, it is necessary to recognize that most decisions are made under stress because, stress is the nonspecific body response to any demands presented to it. Applied Issues Nudge Theory Nudge is a concept in behavioral science, political theory and economics which proposes positive reinforcement and indirect suggestions as ways to influence the behavior and decision-making of groups or individuals. Nudging contrasts with other ways to achieve compliance, such as education, legislation or enforcement. The concept has influenced British and American politicians. Several nudge units exist around the world at the national level, UK, Germany, Japan and others, as well as at the international level, OECD, World Bank, UN. The first formulation of the term and associated principles was developed in cybernetics by James Wilk before 1995 and described by Brunel University academic DJ Stewart as the art of the nudge, sometimes referred to as micro-nudges. It also drew on methodological influences from clinical psychotherapy tracing back to Gregory Bateson, including contributions from Milton Erickson, Watzlawick, Weakland, and Fish, and Bill O'Hanlon. In this variant, the nudge is a micro-targeted design geared towards a specific group of people, irrespective of the scale of intended intervention. In 2008, Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein's book Nudge, Improving Decisions About Health, Wealth, and Happiness brought nudge theory to prominence. It also gained a following among US and UK politicians, in the private sector and in public health. The authors refer to influencing behavior without coercion as libertarian paternalism and the influencers as choice architects. Thaler and Sunstein define their concept as In this form, drawing on behavioral economics, the nudge is more generally applied to influence behavior. One of the most frequently cited examples of a nudge is the etching of the image of a housefly into the men's room urinals at Amsterdam Skip Hall Airport, which is intended to improve the aim. Nudging techniques aim to use judgmental heuristics to our advantage. In other words, a nudge alters the environment so that when heuristic, or system 1, decision-making is used, the resulting choice will be the most positive or desired outcome. An example of such a nudge is switching the placement of junk food in a store, so that fruit and other healthy options are located next to the cash register, while junk food is relocated to another part of the store. In 2008, the United States appointed Sunstein, who helped develop the theory, as Administrator of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs. Notable applications of nudge theory include the formation of the British Behavioral Insights Team in 2010. It is often called the nudge unit, at the British Cabinet Office, headed by David Halpern. Both Prime Minister David Cameron and President Barack Obama sought to employ nudge theory to advance domestic policy goals during their terms. In Australia, the Government of New South Wales established a Behavioural Insights Community of Practice. Nudge theory has also been applied to business management and corporate culture, such as in relation to health, safety and environment HSE, and human resources. Regarding its application to HSE, one of the primary goals of Nudge is to achieve a zero-accident culture. Leading Silicon Valley companies are forerunners in applying Nudge theory in a corporate setting. These companies are using nudges in various forms to increase the productivity and happiness of employees. Recently, further companies are gaining interest in using what is called nudge management to improve the productivity of their white-collar workers. Behavioral insights and nudges are currently used in many countries around the world. Criticisms Nudging has also been criticized. Tammy Boyce, from Public Health Foundation The King's Fund, has said, we need to move away from short-term politically motivated initiatives such as the nudging people idea, which is not based on any good evidence and doesn't help people make long-term behavior changes. Cass Sunstein has responded to critiques at length in his The Ethics of Influence making the case in favor of nudging against charges that nudges diminish autonomy, threaten dignity, violate liberties, or reduce welfare. Ethicists have debated this rigorously. These charges have been made by various participants in the debate from Bovins to Goodwin. Wilkinson for example charges nudges for being manipulative, while others such as Young question their scientific credibility. Some, such as Hausman and Welch have inquired whether nudging should be permissible on grounds of distributive, 
Justice, Lepanese and Malika have questioned whether nudges are compatible with the rule of law. Similarly, legal scholars have discussed the role of nudges and the law. Behavioral economists such as Bob Sugden have pointed out that the underlying normative benchmark of nudging is still homo economicus, despite the proponents' claim to the contrary. It has been remarked that nudging is also a euphemism for psychological manipulation as practiced in social engineering. There exists an anticipation and, simultaneously, implicit criticism of the nudge theory and works of Hungarian social psychologists who emphasize the active participation in the nudge of its target, Ferenc Miri and Laszlo Garay. Behavioral Finance The central issue in behavioral finance is explaining why market participants make irrational systematic errors contrary to assumption of rational market participants. Such errors affect prices and returns, creating market inefficiencies. The study of behavioral finance also investigates how other participants take advantage, arbitrage, of such errors and market inefficiencies. Behavioral finance highlights inefficiencies, such as under or over reactions to information, as causes of market trends and, in extreme cases, of bubbles and crashes. Such reactions have been attributed to limited investor attention, overconfidence, overoptimism, mimicry, herding instinct, and noise trading. Technical analysts consider behavioral finance to be behavioral economics academic cousin and the theoretical basis for technical analysis. Other key observations include the asymmetry between decisions to acquire or keep resources, known as the bird in the bush paradox, and loss aversion, the unwillingness to let go of a valued possession. Loss aversion appears to manifest itself in investor behavior as a reluctance to sell shares or other equity if doing so would result in a nominal loss. It may also help explain why housing prices rarely slash slowly decline to market clearing levels during periods of low demand. Bernatzi and Dala, applying a version of prospect theory, claim to have solved the equity premium puzzle something conventional finance models so far have been unable to do. Experimental finance applies the experimental method, for example, creating an artificial market through some kind of simulation software to study people's decision-making process and behavior in financial markets. Quantitative behavioral finance Quantitative behavioral finance uses mathematical and statistical methodology to understand behavioral biases. In marketing research, a study shows little evidence that escalating biases impact marketing decisions. Leading contributors include Gundutz Cajun Alp, editor of the Journal of Behavioral Finance from 2001-04, and collaborators include 2002 Nobel laureate Vernon Smith, David Porter, Don Bailnovich, Vladimir Aleva, and Ahmet Duran, and Ray Sturm. Financial Models some financial models used in money management and asset valuation incorporate behavioral finance parameters. Examples Criticisms Critics such as Eugene Fama typically support the efficient market hypothesis. They contend that behavioral finance is more a collection of anomalies than a true branch of finance and that these anomalies are either quickly priced out of the market or explained by appealing to market microstructure arguments. However, individual cognitive biases are distinct from social biases, the former can be averaged out by the market, while the other can create positive feedback loops that drive the market further and further from a fair price equilibrium. Similarly, for an anomaly to violate market efficiency, an investor must be able to trade against it and earn abnormal profits, this is not the case for many anomalies. A specific example of this criticism appears in some explanations of the equity premium puzzle. It is argued that the cause is entry barriers, both practical and psychological, and that the equity premium should reduce as electronic resources open up the stock market to more traders. In response, others contend that most personal investment funds are managed through superannuation funds, minimizing the effect of these putative entry barriers. In addition, professional investors and fund managers seem to hold more bonds than one would expect given return differentials. Behavioral Game Theory Behavioral Game Theory, invented by Colin Kammerer, analyzes interactive strategic decisions and behavior using the methods of game theory, experimental economics and experimental psychology. Experiments include testing deviations from typical simplifications of economic theory such as the independence axiom and neglect of altruism, fairness, and framing effects. On the positive side, the method has been applied to interactive learning and social preferences. As a research program, 
the subject is a development of the last three decades. Economic reasoning in animals. A handful of comparative psychologists have attempted to demonstrate quasi-economic reasoning in non-human animals. Early attempts along these lines focus on the behavior of rats and pigeons. These studies draw on the tenets of comparative psychology, where the main goal is to discover analogues to human behavior in experimentally tractable non-human animals. They are also methodologically similar to the work of Furster and Skinner. Methodological similarities aside, early researchers in non-human economics deviate from behaviorism in their terminology. Although such studies are set up primarily in an operant conditioning chamber using food rewards for pecking slash bar pressing behavior, the researchers describe pecking and bar pressing not in terms of reinforcement and stimulus response relationships but instead in terms of work, demand, budget, and labor. Recent studies have adopted a slightly different approach, taking a more evolutionary perspective, comparing economic behavior of humans to a species of non-human primate, the capuchin monkey. Animal studies. Many early studies of non-human economic reasoning were performed on rats and pigeons in an operant conditioning chamber. These studies looked at things like peck rate, in the case of the pigeon, and bar pressing rate, in the case of the rat, given certain conditions of reward. Early researchers claim, for example, that response pattern, pecking slash bar pressing rate, is an appropriate analogy to human labor supply. Researchers in this field are advocate for the appropriateness of using animal economic behavior to understand the elementary components of human economic behavior. In a paper by Battaglia, Green, and Kegel, they write. Labor Supply The typical laboratory environment to study labor supply in pigeons is set up as follows. Pigeons are first deprived of food. Since the animals become hungry, food becomes highly desired. The pigeons are then placed in an operant conditioning chamber and through orienting and exploring the environment of the chamber they discover that by pecking a small disc located on one side of the chamber, food is delivered to them. In effect, pecking behavior becomes reinforced, as it is associated with food. Before long, the pigeon pecks at the disc, or stimulus, regularly. In this circumstance, the pigeon is said to work for the food by pecking. The food, then, is thought of as the currency. The value of the currency can be adjusted in several ways, including the amount of food delivered, the rate of food delivery and the type of food delivered. Some foods are more desirable than others. Economic behavior similar to that observed in humans is discovered when the hungry pigeons stop working slash work less when the reward is reduced. Researchers argue that this is similar to labor supply behavior in humans. That is, like humans, who, even in need, will only work so much for a given wage, the pigeons demonstrate decreases in pecking, work, when the reward, value, is reduced. Dot. Demand. In human economics, a typical demand curve has negative slope. This means that as the price of a certain good increase, the amount that consumers are willing and able to purchase decreases. Researchers studying the demand curves of non-human animals, such as rats, also find downward slopes. Researchers have studied demand in rats in a manner distinct from studying labor supply in pigeons. Specifically, in an operant conditioning chamber containing rats as experimental subjects, we require them to press a bar, instead of pecking a small disc, to receive a reward. The reward can be food, reward pellets, water, or a commodity drink such as cherry cola. Unlike in previous pigeon studies, where the work analog was pecking and the monetary analog was a reward, the work analog in this experiment is bar pressing. Under these circumstances, the researchers claim that changing the number of bar presses required to obtain a commodity item is analogous to changing the price of a commodity item in human economics. In effect, results of demand studies in non-human animals show that, as the bar pressing requirement, cost, increase, the number of times an animal presses the bar equal to or greater than the bar pressing requirement, payment, decreases. Behavioral psychology. Also known as cognitive psychology. Evolutionary psychology. An evolutionary psychology perspective states that many of the perceived limitations in rational choice can be explained as being rational in the context of maximizing biological fitness and the ancestral environment, but not necessarily in the current one. Thus, when living at subsistence level where a reduction of resources may result in death, it may have been rational to place a greater value on preventing losses than on obtaining gains. 
It may also explain behavioral differences between groups, such as males being less risk-averse than females since males have more variable reproductive success than females. While unsuccessful risk-seeking may limit reproductive success for both sexes, males may potentially increase their reproductive success from successful risk-seeking much more than females can. Artificial intelligence Much of the decisions are more and more made either by human beings with the assistance of artificial intelligent machines or wholly made by these machines. Chalitsi Mahawala and Evan Hurwitz in their book, Study the utility of behavioral economics in such situations and concluded that these intelligent machines reduce the impact of bounded rational decision making. In particular, they observed that these intelligent machines reduce the degree of information asymmetry in the market, improve decision making, and thus making markets more rational. The use of AI machines in the market in applications such as online trading and decision making has changed major economic theories. Other theories where AI has had impact include in rational choice, rational expectations, game theory, Lewis turning point, portfolio optimization and counterfactual thinking. Related fields Experimental economics Experimental economics is the application of experimental methods, including statistical, econometric, and computational to study economic questions. Data collected in experiments are used to estimate effect size, test the validity of economic theories, and illuminate market mechanisms. Economic experiments usually use cash to motivate subjects, in order to mimic real-world incentives. Experiments are used to help understand how and why markets and other exchange systems function as they do. Experimental economics have also expanded to understand institutions and the law, experimental law and economics. A fundamental aspect of the subject is design of experiments. Experiments may be conducted in the field or in laboratory settings, whether of individual or group behavior. Variants of the subject outside such formal confines include natural and quasi-natural experiments. Neuroeconomics Neuroeconomics is an interdisciplinary field that seeks to explain human decision-making, the ability to process multiple alternatives and to follow a course of action. It studies how economic behavior can shape our understanding of the brain, and how neuroscientific discoveries can constrain and guide models of economics. It combines research methods from neuroscience, experimental and behavioral economics, and cognitive and social psychology. As research into decision-making behavior becomes increasingly computational, it has also incorporated new approaches from theoretical biology, computer science, and mathematics. Neuroeconomic studies decision-making by using a combination of tools from these fields so as to avoid the shortcomings that arise from a single perspective approach. In mainstream economics, expected utility EU, and the concept of rational agents are still being used. Many economic behaviors are not fully explained by these models, such as heuristics and framing. Behavioral economics emerged to account for these anomalies by integrating social, cognitive, and emotional factors in understanding economic decisions. Neuroeconomics adds another layer by using neuroscientific methods in understanding the interplay between economic behavior and neural mechanisms. By using tools from various fields, some scholars claim that neuroeconomics offers a more integrative way of understanding decision-making. Notable people economics finance psychology